Hey guys, so today I'm going to be giving you a bit more of a news briefing on the Marimo Moss Ball Snafu. So most of you in the US probably have heard by now that invasive zebra mussels have been found on Marimo Moss Balls in 46 states. Now you might be saying like, well, what is a zebra mussel in the first place? And if you're coming from like New York, you probably have already heard of them because they've already been an issue and have invaded so many of the waterways here in the United States already. But some states have not been infested with zebra mussels. But this is the first time that they have been found on Marimo moss balls. So if you're a seller of Marimo moss balls, whether that be online or not, you should actually check with your state agencies about restrictions as many states, though they don't have like regulations on marimo moss balls, they do have restrictions on zebra mussels. And some states, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, they have some stop orders on selling marimo moss balls entirely. Now I have some marimo moss balls in my collection and you may actually have some marimo moss balls in your collection. And I know aquarium owners love Marimo moss balls for their aquarium setups. And if you've had those Marimo moss balls for years, then you don't have to worry. However, if you purchased Marimo moss balls anytime after February 1st, 2021, then the US Fish and Wildlife Service is really encouraging you to destroy your moss balls and they're urging you not to dump them down your sinks or any of the water that's associated with dumping down your sinks. Because if you are an aquarium owner and you had marimo moss balls, oftentimes you'll siphon that water off and then you'll just dump it down your sink without decontaminating it. And the reality is that some of those marimo moss balls, if you got them after February 1st, 2021, they may actually be contaminated with zebra mussels. And that is one way that zebra mussels can get into our waterway. Now, they have three recommendations for actually destroying your moss balls. And you can read about it on their website and I'll link to that here and also in the description below. And I totally encourage you to actually read about it yourselves. But those three options are freezing in a plastic bag for about 24 hours. You could boil your moss balls for at least one minute and you can actually even submerge them. So you could do that with a, a dilute bleach or an undiluted white vinegar solution, and they recommend for about 20 minutes. So as I mentioned, there are more details on their website, which again, I'll link here, and then also below in the description. And please, please, please read it for yourself because they have really a lot of great information that they've been compiling since this was first reported back in February. But I wanna take a step back and share my earlier conversation that I had with Rick Boatner. Now he's Oregon's Department Fish and Wildlife Invasive Species Coordinator. And the reason why I'm talking to him is because he was one of the first folks that really sounded the alarm on this whole kerfuffle or this whole snafu with the marimo moss balls and the zebra mussels. Plus, what's important is that the Pacific Northwest is one of the few places in the United States where zebra mussels haven't invaded the environment, which is why this is so important to get this information out, particularly to people in that area. Now, I really wanted Rick to give us an update into where everything is now that five months have passed since the alarm was first sounded. And it was great because he really shared why we need to take zebra mussel seriously and how that spread here actually happened in the first place um, and most recently with the Marimo moss balls because it's important because it, it just goes to show you how quickly things can go awry, um, particularly with uh, importation of plant materials. And in this case, an algae, because as you know, marimo moss balls are not really a plant, they're an algae. And that is important because it comes into play with the regulation of the marimo moss ball. So let's go to the interview. And let's step back um, and say, you know, what what is what is a zebra mussel? Why should we be concerned? Oh, a zebra mussel uh, and its cousin, the quagga mussel, uh, is a uh, small, but you know, when they get adult size, they're a little bigger than your thumbnail. And they came into the uh, Great Lakes back in 
in the early 1980s from the Caspian Black Sea area and proceeded to invade the whole Mississippi River system and most of the east. In 2007, possibly as early as 2004, it went over the Continental Divide and entered uh, Lake Mead. And then from Lake Mead, it spread down the Colorado River system all through California, Arizona, infested Lake Powell. So the Pacific Northwest is right now muscle free. Yeah. Uh, if they get into a system, they multiply so quickly and they clog everything. So you have you spend a lot of money for uh, water supplies, uh, for drinking water, hydro, nuclear. Uh, it just clogs everything. So we're talking about millions, if not billions, of dollars just to uh, take care of the plumbing. So what's happening? Did like the 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 uh, Marimo boss balls get pulled off the shelf, or what is the what's the solution right now? And if well, people have them or had purchased them within like a certain period, uh, or can they purchase them right now? Oregon currently they cannot. Okay. Uh, well, I'll we'll back up a little bit. When we found them, as we went through the stores, we pulled them off the shelves. Uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has authority of the mussels. We did not have authority for the moss balls. I see. Uh, but they had zebra mussels in, so we could pull them there. Uh, so we pulled them off the, the shelves. We requested stores to look at their own inventory and pull anything and then destroy the moss balls and let us know if they found anything. Uh, later, about, about April 12th, we got with Oregon Department of Ag and, at, and they made a temporary rule that banned these moss balls from Oregon from import until we could figure out how to handle it. Uh, we do know the moss balls came from the Ukraine area, the only ones infested. There was like five uh, places where they were imported originally, spread out through there. Uh, we had a lot. We had a lot of states working on it. We had the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, Custom and Borders, uh, Homeland. I mean, everybody was working, trying to figure out uh, everything because we weren't expecting zebra mussels in plants. We've been doing boat inspections in Oregon, trailered boat watercraft inspections since uh, 2010. And we get them that way, but that was kind of a surprise that they came in on plants. Well, this is actually technically, I guess, an algae, right? Yeah, so it, even though it's it, even though it's you know it's it's not your typical like you know house plant or whatever like that. Right. But you know what's interesting about it is that it's a there's it's a crossover because a lot of people who, in house plants get marimo moss balls. I'm yeah. wondering now that you're kind of in that network, have you heard of anywhere else where this has become a problem? No that these were found in about 46 different states. So about every state in the union found these. Okay. Uh, other states, Wyoming was the first state that banned them. Uh, and that was the, as soon as they found them, they banned them in their state. And I think there's, let's see, is Wyoming us? I think Montana banned them now. And in other states getting ready, ready to if they haven't already. How do we certify these things are zebra mussel free when they come into the, the uh, borders. So that's the next step, and that's mostly what the feds are working with, the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Custom and Borders, because that's their jurisdiction. And now the states got to find out if they've been got somehow got into the environment. So now we're looking at that, probably going to be using uh, EDN, environmental DNA to analyze uh, various water bodies, especially what for lack of a better term, we'd call aquarium dump sites, uh, where people just dump things and see if we have mussels that uh, would establish there. Now, the fortunate part, most of the mussels were dead in these containers. Uh, we did find a live one, so did Montana, so which was good. I mean, mm -hmm. the odds are that they're all dead, so maybe we have no concerns, but now we gotta spend a lot of time and effort just to verify that they didn't get into the environment and start a population here in Oregon or the Pacific Northwest. If somebody is currently selling them in Oregon or one of these other, not the zebra mussels, but like a marimo moss ball that may or may not be infected, um, my understanding from you is that they shouldn't be selling them, right? No. Or, okay. And then if, if somebody is um, purchasing, whether maybe they're getting it from out of state, 
right? Because you could buy online very easily now right. and I could go get something from New York or New Jersey or wherever. Uh, what should they look out for and what do they need to do? Well, I advise people right now not to buy any. And granted, online, we did find some uh, purchase online from SD sales. At Etsy, yeah. Yeah, so we know they're online. So right now we're advising people, don't buy them. If you are, make sure they have been certified by some government agency that they are a zebra quagga mussel free. Uh, we're still, for Oregon, we're still developing what that will look like, what a certification. Is there a loophole with like phytosanitary certificates because it's not technically a plant and it could just come yes. in without? Is that is that the loophole? That's kind of a loophole until oh. we put this ban in. <laughs> it's uh, crazy. Oregon, it's not because we put a ban in just period. It doesn't yeah. matter. But so we're still trying to figure out. And I think the uh, fed, federal government is figuring out how are they going to verify that this product is clean, uh, which is difficult because... The ones on the moss balls were they were the size of a rice grain. Oh, smaller. So, if you if you knew what you were looking for, you'd go, oh, they're there. Yeah. If you didn't have it, you'd, you'd think, well, it's a piece of gravel or something like that. That let, let me in. let me wash it off down yeah. the uh, down, down the, the drain. drain. Oh yeah. no. People that have them all currently, we're asking to destroy them or mm -hmm. just to watch their aquarium or wherever they keep them and see if we all of a sudden we got mussels uh, yeah. in our aquarium. And then when they're, we're asking when they're doing exchanges in the water to make sure they disinfect that water before they dump it down the sink, just on straight. And you know, it's pretty simple, just a little bleach in there and let it sit for a few minutes and uh, it's pretty safe. Bleach is pretty effective against them. Okay. Uh, the moss ball is a little different stuff. You know, they're so uh, compact that you know, where some people are boiling them just to verify they get it all. But the good part, we're finding the muscles generally on the outside and not inside, but a few of them, we found them inside the product. And it sounds like it came in through the Ukraine, distributed through five different sellers, and from there, it probably distributed outwards even from there. Oh yeah, because all the little distributors picked it up and they just went farther and farther. Now there are a few distributors that propagate this the species on their own hmm. and they've been clean. Yeah. But again, we got to figure out how do we certify they're clean. I mean, right. When we do fish, it's pretty easy. You know, you can easily get a vet certificate that all your fish are healthy, the waters are something in it. But this is a little more difficult trying to figure out how you're going to do it uh, without doing like an eDNA on every every one of them to ver see if they've been touched. Um, do you feel like you've been uh, successful at getting the word out or uh, I mean, maybe it's easier through like a larger entity like Petco, but then you have all these smaller distributors. Are they getting the memo? How are you getting the memo out to these well, smaller distributors? Started out with, uh, we sent out a news release the first day we got notice. So mm -hmm. we got notice at 9.52 in the morning and we had a news release out by five o'clock. So I think the word is out pretty well but it so, only takes one rick it only yeah. takes one <laughs> yeah so so now the, the worrying stage i mean we got a good probably a year to two years to sample and just verify okay this is we're clean still now states that already have muscles are probably going yeah we already got them not a big deal because once you get them you can't do anything you can't yeah i, I mean i i'm in in new york and I'm an I went to school for environmental science and I remember reading about zebra mussels and how they clog everything up and filter the water. Um, so it's like super clear. And we're seeing, I mean, besides the zebra quagga mussels, you get other pests that come in on, uh, you know, uh, just recently in Oregon on some potted plants from Florida, we were getting uh, Cuban uh, tree frogs. Yeah, which oh. we don't think they'll do much in Oregon, but that's yeah. still, you know, you can do all the analysis you want and based on past records, but certain species, you know, they can still take off in a new environment. You didn't think you'd have 120 degree Fahrenheit weather either. Right. No. Uh, and depending, Oregon's very varied in climate. I mean, mm -hmm. we're the valley where I live in, it's more Mediterranean type, uh, but you get over the mountain and it's like uh, New York in the winter, it's high desert, snow. Yeah freezing temperatures yeah in the valley we don't get freezing temperatures very often mm -hmm. and we generally yeah never get 
will hardly ever get over 100 degree weather. So that's new for us. So, so what did you do about the Cuban tree frogs? We, they, they turned them over to us and uh, they were uh, euthanized. And then we put a news release out because this was like uh, what, a month later after the zebra mussels came in mm -hmm. on those plants and then we got the Cuban tree frogs. And then you always get you know various insects. I mean, our nation is so mobile and these move so quickly yeah. that you get introduction of invasive uh, insects that you never had. Uh, yeah. you know, funguses, you know, we had a sudden oak disease or death show up in nursery plants and now it affects most of a, a good part of Southwest Oregon mm. oak, uh, trees. Yeah. So very easy, I guess, not simple. Easy yeah. to get across borders and get established with nobody recognizing it until it's too late. Right, right. Well, I really appreciate your time. Um, this is great because there's uh, clear takeaways for people to mm -hmm. to do and to be vi vigilant about. So I really appreciate it, Rick. Oh, no you, problem. <laughs> you, were, you were the poster child for this. <laughs> yeah, like I said, all the states were affected and we all were on the same learning curve here because this is not what we were expecting these things to show up in. Yeah, it, it, you, you, you acted quickly and I mean, that's what, that's what you're there yep. for, I guess. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. As of running this video, there are still purveyors selling potentially contaminated Marimo moss balls, including in states where there are restrictions. If you see a seller with Marimo moss balls, please reach out to inform them. And if they are unresponsive, you can file a report with your state fish and wildlife service.